Item, sir. Do you have two minutes for a couple questions? I gotta tell you that when somebody says something like, I've interviewed all the biggest people in Hollywood, you immediately don't believe it. <laughs> so don't say that anymore. Because all it does is create uh, an air of uh, non credibility. Because I know you haven't. You know? I know you're just trying to, like, you know, build them up and everything, but. Uh, she's great, I'm shy, and she's more. Um, reality so. works better. Well, he has a very impressive list of interviewees. Well, that's a little better. Is that better? Does that work it's for you better, better? Than, than a statement that can't possibly be true. Well, he does have... I was he has impressed. interviewed all the best people in Hollywood. A large that's percentage. That's an impossibility. A large percentage of good people. Has he done Anthony Hopkins? Has he done Tom Cruise? Has he done Don Travolta? Has he done Nicolas Cage? Has he done uh, um, Julia Roberts? Has he done, you know, I mean, really, think about it. Jerry Bruckheimer? Okay, that's one. <laughs> it's not all. It's okay. just one. Okay, he's interviewed you know? two big people in Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't want to say that. You want to say he has inter interviewed some of the most important people in Hollywood. That would be the true statement. Because and, and when you say the other thing you said, I just know you're lying. Well, he's, you know? he's lying. So it makes me think lie. not more of him, but less of him. So don't do that anymore. Okay, okay? I will never ever do that again. No, I don't. promise. It doesn't work. What do you love and hate about these things from Arizona? About what things? These things. You know, from here. I'm just looking for a place to take a nap. <laughs> um, and I hope the movie will provide me that. <laughs> I don't like places where you have to stand up. You know, a long party where I must stand up. I'm 70 years old. I need a rocking chair. But all the excitement, the glitz and glamour, it doesn't do it for you anymore? <laughs> I'm kind of looking around for the glitz and the glamour. The games, the crowds, the red carpet, the beautiful women, the wine, the women, the song. He's still looking. Yeah, still looking. <laughs> Why do you love and hate about being interviewed? Um, I suppose I love the attention, more or less. Love is probably not the right word. Um, I hate the fact that, except for you, everybody asks the same questions they've been asking for the last 20 years. Um, and I try to give different answers, which, you know, tests my creativity. Um, Actually, I don't really hate anything. I can get irritated by things, you know, or bored, that's easy. But I don't really hate anything. What's the best interview you've ever done? Does anything come to mind? I probably wrote it myself. <laughs> no, there was a thing where I wrote, uh, it was a web thing where somebody wanted an interview and I just uh, started out with, what's your favorite color? Because it's the stupidest possible question. And I answered a whole bunch of questions I made up about, you know, philosophy and religion and, you know, what do you do in your spare time and, and all the regular questions, but tried to, uh, you know, put a spin on everything. I think it might even be available on the web still. And that's the best interview you've done? The one I did myself? Yeah. Wrote it myself? Yeah. I got it. There was a magazine that had an interview with somebody. I think it was Sharon Stone. One of those 20 questions kind of thing. And I looked at it and I said, let me just for fun answer those questions myself. And I made up a couple of extra ones. And, uh, put it on the web and somebody picked it up. Where do you find meaning in your life? Oh my god, well, where are you? What are you doing here? I'd say these days mostly with my family, with my kids. Uh, watching, watching them uh, learn and 
you know, become aware of what's really happening in the world. Um, and they need a lot of help, and I'm there to give it to them. And that's uh, most of my meaning these days. It certainly isn't in the parts that I play or anything. It's kind of old hat right now, you know. 222, I think, feature movie. 166 hours of my own TV series. And a bunch of movies of the week and stuff. And 35 plays, 11 of Shakespeare's plays. Uh, it's hard to find inspiration in my work. And I find it, I think, mainly in the family now. How many children do you have? Seven, three grandchildren, and a great grandchild. And I sort of figure I'm responsible for all of them. How would you evaluate yourself as a father? What? How would you evaluate yourself as a father? I'm not great at it. I'm just, you know, trying to fulfill the obligation. You know, I mean, I'm lazy, and, you know, I've got other things to do, and uh, I guess the best thing that I do is put aside something that's for me and go ahead and, you know, hang out with the kid for whatever they need. You know, homework. Um, Are you help them with their homework? Well, yeah. But then, you know, like uh, yesterday I went to a baseball game with my youngest kid, Matt. I was looking at you. Watched him play. That's good one. And uh, it didn't criticize him. You know? Uh, hey, uh, gave him all the support I could. Tino! And today, uh, it's a, before I came here, I was in a real hurry to try to get this stuff done with uh, one of my daughters, Madeline, uh, who has some tests she can make up. She's got bad grades on. I, we talked the teacher into letting her do it again. You know, well, homework, not tests. And uh, it's all about English literature, similes and metaphors. Pronouns and stuff like that. And uh, I really had a great time doing it. And it was, uh, it wasn't just helping her with her homework, it was the positive connection. With her. You know, there's not just, uh, you know, waking them up in the morning, getting them off to school, and having dinner with them and putting them to bed. It's like really kind of an intellectual hunger. Right? You know, sitting there with your daughter and trying to get her to think up metaphors. Right? You know, it's pretty cool. Did your parents help you with your homework? Nobody ever helped me with anything. Like my parents never helped me with my homework either, so I think it's a new thing, right? They didn't used to do that. Yeah, you were on your own. What do you most want from your children? Happiness. You want them to be happy. That's it. I had, uh, with my older children, you know, I had dreams of them carrying on a dynasty and everything. And I finally figured out that that wasn't their trip, that was my trip. And they were, and I thought to myself, are they taking this trip because they want to take it? Or just to please me? And I'll let them go. And every single one of them went someplace else. And I realized that that's what should happen. You know, they shouldn't have to be doing something for their whole life. It's just, you know, to please the father, be part of the dynasty. It's like being one of the princes of England, you know, where you're like stuck with it. And uh, I released them all. And none of them are going away that, uh, you know, that, that was the uh, genre. Are you happy? Yeah. Why? I got a great wife, a great dog, 